All right. Um. So last week or Saturday, right after. Um. After the short delay from Saturday's call, we were pretty much. I believe. Yeah, right at this closure here, and. Like I said, I've, I've pretty much stayed away from dollar and EU for now because I really want to go back to, you know, just looking for just straight swings and not, you know, worrying too much about the intraday plays because not only can they cause, you know, unnecessary losses, but a lot of the times the RR isn't always as good as it can be, right? Um, so when, you know, what I was referencing to a couple of days ago, was an area inside an area inside of this candle here that took out a previous wick there and then caused the whole you know year-long correction and I wasn't looking for you know quote-unquote DXY buys there I was more so just trying to reference if we would maintain this low or not. I really wanted to see if we were gonna hold this or not because if we take this out, then there's a very good possibility that we could start seeing a correction within the next, you know, two to three days, actually one to two days. Um, and the reason why I acknowledge this low is because when we look at the weekly, right notice this is essentially the start of this entire channel that lasted for a year and a half i believe from june 2018 yeah like a year and a half and this is essentially where it starts you know the official impulse there correction impulse correction impulse correction impulse and it just becomes messy there and now this is considered a you know just a type of low to me that's significant that i want to see what happens afterwards and not only that when i'm referencing actual daily structure or just daily momentum as a whole right the market is quote unquote fractal so moves will tend to um you know repeat themselves and essentially that's correlated in terms of behavior in terms of you know move size move duration you know stuff like that so if you look at previous moves and you just start comparing them they start to become very similar right they start to become very similar right here from this high to this low you know moves become very similar right do you guys get what i'm saying here right so one two three and there's four different um ranges that are relatively the same length and that's a pretty much a decent sign to see that we can probably start correcting you know very very soon um now by correction i don't mean a full-on pullback because ever since we we topped out uh, mid-march or mid to late march right we've been bearish and the correction has been relatively sloppy then we have another impulse and then the correction was relatively sloppy again so i'm pretty much expecting the same thing to happen here right and the only key reference point that matters to me is pretty much the previous low because this would now be considered a monthly inefficiency fill right so it, it makes sense because we're about to close the previous monthly closure so not only that, but we also took out a very significant low. That's even a monthly low from where you can, as you can see there, right, right here. Um, so it's, you know, we'll probably close. We probably won't see much happen for the rest of the month, um, rest of the week. So I'm more attentive to see if we can start pulling back and to see if there's a possibility of trying to catch a re-entry. Because if we catch this re-entry back to a previous low, Right from there, we can easily assume another type of move with the relative, you know, duration. I mean, not duration, distance as that. And that would end up leading to, 
you know, coming back into previous range here. Right, so if that's the case, then now it becomes very interesting. Now you really have to just pay attention to see what the macros are saying or, you know, just pay attention to small news to see what's happening. Um, not necessarily take everything to heart, but I do want to see, you know, what happens if we come back to tap this area here. All right, I want to see if we're going to essentially maintain structure. Right, because technically this is a higher high here. This is a higher high. Let me clear all this for you guys. Right, technically this is a move to the upside. Right, although momentum is not clearly to the downside, I really want to see what happens here. Um, obviously, this is you know the weekly time frame, so we're we're gonna have a lot of time before um, we well not a lot of time, but we're we're gonna know if like how this reacts because it's going to be very very slow and we, we just have to pay attention to the movements there because if we hit if we hold structure in this relative area now these become targets in the long term right does that make sense from any perspective not necessarily right now um but we do have to acknowledge the fact that even though momentum is to the downside that we're starting to come back into an overall deep discounted pricing. So from a macro standpoint, <clears throat> it's just going to be very interesting to see what happens if we do reach down here and then see what happens from there. Um, same thing goes for Euro USD. You know, this, although this looks so, so much more bullish, right, compared to this, um, you got to realize that obviously dollar is what influences Euro USD and not the other way around. So, <clears throat> although this looks super bullish, this, this looks like it even wants to take out this high in the long term. And to an extent, you could even consider this a schematic. Uh, not necessarily the cleanest schematic, right? This could easily be your pre-supply, sudden climax, secondary test, spring, a very long phase, uh, you know, C to D. And this would be your LPS, which would then form. And if we take out this high start struggling this is your sign of strength and then that would be a moon of the of the moon of a long i mean the the moon of a lifetime which in essence is just like this right this whole accumulation that we've been talking about on gold um we've talked about it countless times and now look where it's at now we've already taken out all-time highs right and who's to say you know this has to stop anytime soon You see, like the potential is there, right? But when it comes to this stuff, it's like, this is your long-term stuff. But the good thing is, is now you have a clear direction to, to play off of, right? Reading the narrative that price is giving you, which creates a bias, right? You now execute based on the bias and you execute based off rules and just whatever you do that works for you. Um, so now going into more so intraday, right? I honestly haven't even traded this week. Right, this entire week in EU, I was waiting to see if we would tap this after clearing these lows here. But unfortunately, this broke structure here. So this is now pretty much invalid. Right, somebody asked me about that. Whereas like, if something doesn't hit your POI, how do you know? Structure, it's all it is. Because we broke structure here. We turned the discount, right? Very, very sloppy play. Honestly, I tried to look for something. I didn't find anything, so I didn't play anything off of it, right? But we had a discounted play and gave another move to the upside, which took out previous liquidity. And that is there a relative 50 to 60 pip move, potential of over 80 pips. And this looks like it doesn't even want to stop, you know? So it's just, we're in a tricky, tricky situation, right? I would prefer to see this pull back, but even if we pull back into potential POI here because it's an open and then an inefficiency there, even if this starts pulling back here, we have to acknowledge the fact that this isn't really the most convincing high, right? But although it's not the most convincing high, structure is still intact. Until structure breaks, you can't really assume otherwise because I promise you so many people are trying to sell this because this looks like the type of you know, nature that divergence shows, 
like let's let's test that out. <coughs> and go to enemies. What is that called again? RSI. There you go. RSI. See, like it, it's it's very predictable. Like I didn't even have to look at the chart to see that. Um, so a lot of people might start trying to sell this, but it's like you gotta understand that unless we break significant lows here and here, this will not be bearish, right? Until then, any drop is a continuation to the upside. Um, so even though that's the case, now you understand the perspective that you know 80% of quote unquote retail is looking at. Because I promise you, by next morning, we're going to see that probably on FX book that, you know, majority of people are in sales and you see why. Um, but the thing is, is like this has no reason to stop. Right. Look at this. This has no reason to stop selling. This is pointless in not only in terms of time, but just in terms of wasting money. Like why? Why would you want to sell this? You're trying to catch a mitigation play up here. To, so that then you can catch a pretty entry for 50 pips and then you miss the real play and that's 100 200 pips missed out you get what I'm saying like it's it, it's really pointless to try to look for sales at this point because there's no real sign to even if you can assume that that's the high and you're very very sure that's the high it's not worth the risk um, although it is calculated risk I'm focused more so on preservation than you know than the potential loss itself um, so at this point, it's like I want to see the month is going to close very, very bullish. Uh, no matter what happens, that goes for GU too. Um, hold up. Damn, I thought I was going to sneeze. Never mind. But um, the same thing goes for GU. Like every single play that happened was in London. And that's fine. Then, you know, that, that happens. Um, it happens like just because we aren't in session obviously there has been a potential move there but since i'm really trying to go back to my roots of just swing trading it's just it, it it's you know it's whatever at this point like i'm not really worried about it i know where the bias is it's just a matter of waiting for the next opportunity so i really think that for the rest of the week we'll probably be bullish um but we are approaching a very very key you know just point of reference Right, potential point of reference one is the 50% here. Potential point of reference two will be anywhere inside this candle. But obviously, I don't really care for that. Like, it'd be cool to see, you know, that start to correct itself. But even if we give a reaction from here, I'm looking for every excuse to buy, whether it's there, there, or even there, right? Because the bias is up. And this monthly is, you know, very convincing. Right, because this is not playing to what we've been saying for the past three months, honestly. So now it's just a matter of just being patient with it and just allowing, you know, price to give us more opportunity to then take it to the moon. Right. So outside of that, there wasn't really many plays this week. Um, just from my pairs, like I only looked at EU and GU this week. So not much to say about it. It's just continuation on continuation um but i mean other than that do you guys have any questions i do have uh, a topic can I, hello yeah um can you really can you explain that uh i think that part when you said uh it isn't invalid or it isn't valid sorry but that uh, when I think I think it was on EU when you said that the uh, I guess the structure is invalid because it broke the BOS. What wait what? No, I was saying that I was waiting for a POI inside of here. Right. That was when price was here. But once price broke that previous high, that breaks structure. So now this is my range to play based off of, which is this here. Oh, all right, all right, cool. Because I think that's why I was probably having some issues mm -hmm. in the same category right here. 
because I couldn't really identify, you know, the POIs and so forth like that. But now you alluded that that broke structure, so that's basically uh, invalid. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, that's now your new fib in play, and this is your discounted price. Right. So you. All right. So all right. Cool. 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 So when you're playing with continuation POIs, you always want to play in the structural range that you're in, which is this previous low and this previous high. Obviously, before, before that, I was looking for this previous low to that previous high, and I was really wanting to see, because this is honestly a 90% retracement, I was wanting to see just a quick wick. So that then, that would have been a, a reaction in New York, and then throughout the day, that would have just gone up. But obviously, Makes that sense. didn't happen. So, Makes sense. Makes sense. It makes a lot of sense now because I think that's some what I was having issues with. So uh, here, now we broke structure. So now this is my new low. Makes sense. And wherever this makes a high, that's the new high. Then we come back in the discount, and that goes up higher. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Well, I mean, it seems like everybody's good then. Um, I do want to, I do want to talk about something though, is we have how many people on this call? You have 17 people on this call, right? So outside of the admins and, you know, the people that have been with me for a long time, I want everybody to tell me how long you've been in the group. No, this is no corny shit. Like, I, I want to prove a point. I'm, I'm making a point. Uh, give me a, give me a time. I know since you launched the course, how long has that been? Okay, so everybody besides maybe like one or two, maybe like three to four people have been in here for no more than two months. And that goes for honestly, a ton of the people in the group. And there, you know, you see some people have it click instantly. Um, for example, is Cole in here? Cole was one of the ones that pretty much had it. No, he's not in here. Uh, no, he's not in here. Um, Sergio, make sure like that nobody's waiting please and um but like for example cole like it clicked for him instantly but that's because he's been experienced before and he was just looking for that final you know that you know that final click to happen and for some people it's it's very very slow like uh, i'm not gonna say any names but you know for some others it's very very slow so for the people that's very very slow right you, you i've gotten messages saying you know you see people um, obviously posting these results and now you're in the mindset of, of a FOMO to where now you want to rush these results too because you want to show them off too but you got to understand that you're defeating the purpose right so essentially um, why are you guys trading again Freedom, exactly, right? So you're trading for freedom. You're trading so you can, you know, not only make money from this, but some people just want to live happily and trade. Some other people want to make other businesses with the money from trading. Um, but when you're now in the mindset that you're looking at somebody else and you're starting to quote unquote FOMO and try to rush these results, you're now defeating the purpose that you're, you know, going after. You're now not looking for freedom. 
you're looking for fulfillment in those in that success to make you feel better which is a completely wrong approach because now you're changing your entire way of psychology and it's now fucking with your results right so we have to acknowledge we have to remember you know consistently remind ourselves that we do this for freedom we do this for ourselves right yes we're a family yes we're a community but at the end of the day everybody in here is wanting to learn how to trade for themselves for their own personal reasons and that's yes that's selfish but at the end of the day that's reality and that's just being truthful um so we have to acknowledge that although some people are seeing success we cannot have you know jealousy we cannot have anything any type of vibe like that because now you're adding an extra barrier to yourself and you're now looking for fulfillment instead of pursuing freedom does that make sense and i felt like that's something that we had to talk about because like like I, when i when i first first started getting these messages i'm like damn what am i doing wrong right but then i have to under, i have to realize myself too this group has been open for it's almost 4 months now we opened up april 10th which was three months and 19 days ago and we got to understand that this isn't going to just be easy right the best traders in the group have been with me for over a year at least right juan is i think already about to be a year and a half in october um rav is about to be a year soon um who else raj has been with me over a year you know and the, and the list goes on right so you got to understand that you got to enjoy it like you can't you can't let yourself be frustrated seeing other people's results because that type of jealousy is defeating the purpose of what of why you're doing this right and i'm going to keep saying that i'm going to keep repeating the same thing because it, it's it's true yeah you see everybody goes through that it, it's it's fomo it's emotion it's it's what we go through as people you know um so i mean that just goes for everybody just you got to understand that yes hold on let me show you this is a random random trading group this is RCV, right? We are in our own lane from any other group, but we also have to acknowledge that there is a lane for every single person in this group, right? There is my lane, Sergio's, Adrian's, David's, Eric's, other Eric, right? And the list goes on. There's individual lanes in our own lane because we're essentially a community where you know each individual has their own path that they have to go through right this process is very different for everybody because everybody comes from different um, not only backgrounds but different ways of thinking and different levels of experience so you know trying to compare yourself just kind of creates unnecessary conflict that will lead you into another person's path without you even noticing it and now you're fucking yourself over right so you just got to learn to just enjoy, have patience, and and that's it. Just enjoy it. Because if you don't enjoy it, then you're not going to see success. I'm sorry. Right? This is now just going to become like a regular job to you. And you're not, you're going to start getting lazy. And instead of waking up at 6 a.m., you're going to start sleeping in. You're going to lose your motivation. You lose your drive. And you're eventually going to quit. Right? So hopefully that brings some type of perspective. Um, just because I don't want, you know, people to start having conflicts with not other people, but with themselves over the dumb petty shit, you know, like it, it's, it's pointless and that's all it is. It's pointless. Exactly. You see, you felt like you need to take off, take time off charts because I felt little feats were not matching others and why should they match others? Right? At the end of the day, it's not about catching the best entry, making your charts look pretty. At the end of the day, it's about making bread and being happy.
right? And you have to tell yourself, is is me feeling this way or me doing this helping those two goals? Yes or no? Not no, yes, but, no, but, yes or no? Right, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, pretty quick call. I just wanted to, I, I was thinking about that earlier, so I kind of wanted to just let you guys know about that. Um, other than that, I think we've, we, we're making progress. Um, I think we finally found a dude that'll help us with the website. Not, I don't, I don't have my full, you know, confidence in it yet, but we're making progress. So I've already made lists. Like I'm, I've, I'm starting to make, I'm going to start making more videos this week. Like, look, this is, you see, this has been here for like two to three weeks already. Right. Read that components for the pair behavior video. I made that a month ago. Right. So the, so I have the content ready. It's just, I just really want to wait for the website to be fixed just because there's some dude in the group for whatever reason is leaking stuff. And it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's whatever. So until that's fixed, then I can start coming back to showing you guys more content, showing, you know, just starting to mix it up, do different types of things, etc. But yeah, other than that, I think I'll leave it at that.